Hello and welcome to this rather short video on introduction to analysis of variance and multiple comparisons using R. So let's go ahead and start R. First thing as always, let's go ahead and source those external functions and load our data. So this will source those external functions. Assuming I'm hooked up to the internet. There we go. And then this will load in the data. Let's look at the data first. using summary. And here's the output. Notice for college there's only one lasso person. Can't get any useful information out, out of just one person. So let's take that lasso person and recode him or her as an other. In R that's going to take, there's lots of ways of doing it. The way that I do it is first I def determine which record belongs to that lasso person. So SG dollar sign college is the variable. Lasso is the make this a little bit bigger is the level of interest. This is double equals. So if I just run what's inside the parentheses I will get a list of a hundred trues and falses whether or not the college value is equal to lasso. What the which function does is specifies which of those is true. So control R, person or record number 48 is the lasso student. So I'm going to save that number into the variable to change because I'm going to change that record. I could have saved it uh, into the variable Bob, but Bob doesn't mean that much to me. So now I'm going to go into the SG dollar sign college variable entry number 48, which we calculated above, and we're going to set that college to other. That's step two. Step three is we're now going to tell R to forget that lasso ever existed. To do that we're going to use the drop levels command. On the left side of the equals we've got the variable that we're going to end up with inside the parentheses is the variable that we want to drop the zero levels and then the function is drop levels. I haven't run that yet. Before I run the drop levels I'm going to do another summary. Notice that the lasso person is now an other but we've got zero people in lasso so we really do want to drop lasso from consideration. Now I'm going to run this line the drop levels function summary again and notice not only is that lasso person and other lassos all gone. So it's those three lines to do this. Or I should say the way that I do it, it takes those three lines. Now let's attach. I get tired of typing SG dollar sign. And let's begin. Uh, side by side box plot just to get a feel for the data. Grade, tilde, college. This formula is always of the form dependent variable, tilde, independent variable. Or in this setting it's going to be our measurement variable, tilde, our grouping variable. We run that and we have our five box plots. Horizontal line in the middle is going to be the median it looks like there's a difference amongst the five colleges. It looks like Kasner is higher than all the others. It looks like business is lower than all the others. Now the question is, is it really statistically significantly higher or does it just appear that way? To do that we're going to do analysis of variance. Analysis of variance is going to take two lines. First line defines the model. Second line gets the information from the model. The function is AOV. AOV stands for Analysis of Variance. Inside the parentheses of AOV you're going to give it the formula, dependent variable, tilde, independent variable, or measurement and grouping variable as you see fit. Run that line, nothing happens. Notice over here it just echoes that model line. But if we run the summary of the model, then we get the Analysis of Variance table, or at least most of it. 
source, college, and what's left over, residuals or errors, degrees of freedom, sums of squares, the mean squares, the f value. We calculated all those in class. It's a lot of fun doing that. I know I'll never forget it. Um, or does it free for you right there. All it takes is those two lines. And the p-value. Because p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis here is that the means are all equal. We rejected that. So assuming analysis of variance is the correct procedure to use, we can conclude that there is some significant difference amongst the five colleges in terms of average grade. Now what are the assumptions of analysis of variance? Well, the first one is normality in each of the groups. Let's go ahead and use the Shapiro test. Grade, college, and those are separated by commas. Control R. Notice that we have five tests, so we really should multiply the p-values by five. It's the Bonferroni correction that we talked about in class. So the p-value for normality for business is 0 0.409 times 5, which is more than alpha. Arts and sciences, more than alpha. Kastner, more than alpha. Education, more than alpha. Other, more than alpha. Since all of them have p-values greater than alpha, we fail to reject the assumption of normality in each of the groups. Therefore, this data and model pass that test. The second is equality of variances. We're going to use the fligner killeen test function is Fligner.test. Inside the parentheses, it's grade, tilde, college. Notice the output looks very similar to most of the hypothesis testing in R. fligner killeen test of homogeneity of variances. So the null hypothesis is homogeneity of variances, or equality of variances. The test statistic is 1.9866. P-value is 0.7382. Because p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We cannot conclude that the variances are different. Therefore, we can continue. it passes this test. So we check the two assumptions for analysis of variance, which would be normality in each of the groups and equality of variances. It passed both of those assumption tests. Therefore, the conclusions from analysis of variance are appropriate, which means that we actually can conclude that there is at least one of the averages is different from the others. Yeah, that's all, we, that's all that we can conclude. At least one of the average grades is different. That's it. We don't know which one. We don't know if the one that's different is higher or lower, but we do know that at least one is different from the others. To tell which is different, let's go ahead and use the Tukey HSD test. HSD, as you recall from class, stands for Honestly Significant Difference. You feed it mod 1. This is the name of the model. It has to match that. So if we called this model up here Tom, then we'd have to do Tukey HSD of Tom. We run it, and we get this output. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, this specifies the difference that they're looking at for the two colleges that we're compete uh, comparing. So this first line is arts and sciences and business, and the difference is just the sample mean of arts and sciences minus the sample mean of business. Since this number is positive, that means the sample mean for arts and sciences is greater than the sample mean for business. This is the lower and upper confidence limits, and this is the adjusted p-value. Because this p-value is less than alpha, we know that this difference is statistically significant which means that arts and sciences has a higher average, a statistically significant higher average, than business. The second row, Kasner versus business, it's positive. So Kasner's sample mean is greater than business's sample mean. 
by 26.867 points. There's the 95% confidence interval on the true difference in their population means. Here's the p-value. Because p is less than alpha, that means that this difference is not, this, this confidence interval does not include 0, which means that Kastner actually is higher than business in terms of average grade. So the way that I read these tables is I first scan the p-adjusted column, look for the p-values that are less than alpha. One, two, three, four, five. The first five are less than alpha, and then this one down here means that those comparisons are significantly different from zero. They're important. And then I look to see if the difference is positive or negative. Since this difference is negative, that means Kasner is higher than or greater than other. Because these are positive, that means that CAS is greater than business, Kastner greater than business, Ed greater than business, other greater than business. So business is less than everybody. Kastner is greater than CAS, and Kastner is greater than other. Which means, here's the summary, business is less than everybody, Kastner is greater than everybody except for education, there's no significant difference between Kasner and education that we were able to detect. And then all the others are s not significantly different. Which means I'd rather not be a business student in my classes, I'd rather be a Kasner student. Now, remember we had those assumption tests for analysis of variance. What happens if one of the normalities was too, had a p-value that was too small? or the Fligner clean test had a p-value that was too small. That is, what if at least one of the assumptions was violated? Then we can't use analysis variance. We have to use what's called, or there are other options, but the one we're going to use is the Kruskal-Wallis test. The function is Kruskal.test. It's going to be dependent, tilde, independent, or in this setting, it's going to be grade, tilde, grouping. We run that looks like the standard uh, testing output from R. Kruskal-Wallis chi-squared, there's our value of our test statistic. There's the p-value. P-value is less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis. Conclude that at least one is different. At least one population mean is different. Now, if you want to do multiple comparisons, it's going to be the non-parametrics class that you'll have to take. Now, you can easily do it in R, but since you can't easily do it in SAS, I don't want the R people to have more than the SAS people. But it's easy to do, and the, the interpretation is going to be very similar to what you had with Tukey HSD. So that brings us to the end of this quick little how-to with R and analysis variance and multiple comparisons. I hope this was helpful. Take care of yourself. Bye.